After almost an entire year, New York is finally up and running again for their COVID wastewater monitoring. Again, this is uniquely and entirely a state-run program, which is interesting because right here in their notes, they're saying that they started this January 2025. Technically, it started at the end of December when this laboratory transition began. They claim that the laboratory transition to the Wadsworth Center finished on August 2025, but then why did it take over two months to, to actually get the data on the website? I don't know. Because as you see right here, it updated on October 24th of 2025. So right off the bat, there's a new scale. It's low, moderate, high, and very high. Before we had low, moderate, um, we had like a low, high, moderate, high, and then high, high, so very high. So they changed the scaling here. It looks like with this transition to the Wadsworth Center that they have a new method of processing the data using a Cirrus Nanotrap Particle Capture with Digital Droplet PCR or GDPCR where prior to this methodology, they were doing basically what wastewater skin was doing, where they were taking the amount of COVID concentration and normalizing by the pepper mild model virus. But it looks like despite having this normalization methodology, they had different analytical methods being performed across New York State, which essentially means they are measuring the COVID concentration slightly differently between sites. So in their effort to sort of standardize all of this, they're sending it to one facility for all their testing. So in that way, this is now a more stable data set because every single one of these 174 facilities are all getting processed at the same location using the same techniques, so you're getting the same types of results. However, the drawback is that we can now no longer compare this October 24th, 2025 data and any data after this to the data prior to this, because now they're doing it a completely different way from how they were doing it before, which now means that we no longer have a correlation with the case counts historically in New York and etc. So this is good for future proofing this type of thing in New York but it doesn't help us with comparing to the past, giving us a relative sense of how it was then versus how it is now. Ultimately, this is good positive news that we now have access to data again just before our winter wave, but it's also bittersweet.